Praise the Lord. We'd like to again welcome everybody by way of internet. And uh, we're just a little bit more delayed than normal because we had a baby dedication. And the baby happens to be ours. Praise the Lord. Amen. The nominee Noel. Praise God. Amen? Amen. All right. Enjoy that. So again, we're just glad you could join us. And we thank God for your watching. And we pray that everything's well with you and your loved ones in your home and life. And also, we want to continue to pray for our country. God knows it needs it. Our president and all the leaders that they'll make the right decisions in the days ahead. In days ahead, Amen? Amen. Now, let me share a verse of scripture with everybody, and it's uh, found in uh, Proverbs chapter nineteen, verse seventeen. It says, "He that has pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord." And that which he giveth, will he pay him again? <clears throat> In other words, you cannot give the Lord. That's right. Actually, you're lending unto the Lord. Can you imagine that? When you give to the Lord in his work, you're lending to the Lord. And he knows how to reward you and pay you back big time. Amen. Amen. Actually, he gives us double for our trouble. Amen? Yes. Yes. Amen. So, uh, that being said, we'd like to give you the opportunity... For all of you that are watching, a chance to plant a seed in this ministry as we continue to feed the poor and clothe the naked, according to Matthew chapter 25 and on. And we just believe that that's part of our commission in life. So if you'd like to be a part of that ministry, that outreach, we have a PayPal on our website there that you can see. And uh, if you'd like to donate for that, tax deductible, that feel free to do that. Amen, so that we can reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And also there's an address there as well, whatever you're comfortable with. And we would thank you in advance for being a part of this work. Amen, we labor together, the Bible says. And just before we bring the word of God, don't forget to push the share button. I know many of you are because we get a lot of views, thousands actually, and we thank God for that. What a privilege to share the gospel with those that listen. And now for the message today, I title this message, God's promises are still yea and amen. amen. Yea and amen. The Bible says that God changes not. We change, styles change, people change, things change, but God said, I never change. Jesus said in Hebrews, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. We wake up sometimes on the wrong side of the bed. But the Bible said he never sleeps nor slumbers. Amen? Amen. He's on guard and watching over us 24-7. He's our buckler, our shield, our high tower, and our deliverer. Amen? Amen? And not even mentioning he's our salvation, if you know him as your Savior. But it all comes down to having faith and trust in God and in his word. When we have faith and trust in him, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm with you always, even to the end, in spite of our problems, in spite of our circumstances, in spite of our lack, in spite of when the enemy attacks us with those fiery darts, as the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, in spite of the coronavirus, in spite of a pandemic, or anything else that the world or the devil throws at God's people, He's still on the throne and watching over us. Amen? Amen. When we, we please him with our faith. Because the Bible said without faith it's impossible to please God. But it's a great rewarder of them that believe. Yes. Any believers in the place? Amen. Amen. All right. A couple of you. Praise God. They will catch you at the end. Amen. Amen. Everything we need is found in Christ Jesus. Everything. Everything. Your hands didn't do all that you thought they did. Because God holds your next breath. Right. He says whether you have or don't have. He says whether you live or don't live. Yeah. He makes or breaks us. Amen. That's yeah. why you don't want to get God mad at you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And we don't, we can't, listen. God don't have any pets. He loves those who love him. Amen. He said, if you reject me, I must reject you. But if you come to me and love me, he'll take care of you not only in this life, but the life to come. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it says, For all the promises of God in him, in Christ, are yea and amen 
unto the glory of God by us. Yes. What you, by, by you having faith and trust in God, you bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let me bring out a few words in that one verse of Scripture. First of all, it says all. Say that word, all. all. Not some, not a few, not a lot, but all the promises of God. Amen? Amen. Secondly, the word promise. Promise is a guarantee. Mm -hmm. Amen? Nobody can steal the promise from God. We make promises all the time. Some keep them, some don't. God always keeps his promises. Right. Amen? Even when we don't. And then it says, how? What? In Christ Jesus. And the word amen, how many know what the word amen means? It means so be it. So be it. That's what the word, whenever you see the word amen, it says, so be it, done deal, modern language. Amen? That's out of the book of Isaiah. <laughs> Not Isaiah, amen. Right. But that's what it means, all right? So be it. It's done. God's promises through his word. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. God says, let's make a deal. Amen? That I won't renege on. It's a covenant. If you love me and stay faithful, he said, it's a covenant. And you're covered by that covenant, that guarantee, mm -hmm. amen, of eternal life. In spite of all the speed bumps we go over in life, in this life, amen. Because that's why he said in the book of Revelation, he knows that we go through pain, sickness, sorrow, loss of loved ones, all those things. And that's why he said in Revelation, he's going to personally wipe away the tears from our eyes. Amen. And in the book of Job, he says, doesn't he have all our tears numbered? In a bottle, he saves our tears in a bottle. And for God, he says, not only does he knows how many stars, he said all the stars in heaven are numbered, but he goes a step further and he says they're all named. He named, my goodness, can you imagine? There's trillions of stars, and he knows them all one by one by name, just like he knows you by name. He said, my sheep know my voice, and I know theirs as well. Amen. Are you Amen. one of the sheep? Amen. I hope so. Praise God. So we see that God, amen, it all comes down to really putting our faith again and our trust in those promises. You either believe the word of God or you don't. It comes right down to that. And it's not, you know, you can't choose and pick. It's not like going through a smorgasbord line. You know what I mean? Well, I like this. I don't like that. Oh, it's because for some, it wouldn't have anything but two covers. We'd be ripping the pages out. I don't like that. That's, ooh, that's a rough one. I don't want that one. Oh, what do you mean I'm going to hell? Get that page out of there. A, get that out of there. Uh -huh. I'll leave, we'll leave all the heaven ones in there. Right? All the goodies. But we can't do that. It's the whole counsel of God. Amen. 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 And again, it comes down to do you trust him? Amen. How many times the Lord has whispered that in my arm, in my heart, in my ears? When I'm facing a crisis, climbing a mountain, so to speak. He said, do you trust me? Do you still trust me? After all these years, I brought you through so many things. And boy, I can name a list a mile long. Do you still, will you trust me on this one too? Amen. Yes, yeah. Lord. I trust you then, I'll trust you now. And if you should tarry, I'll trust you tomorrow. Because I know the word of God and I know that he loves me in spite of all our weaknesses, in spite of our lacks, in spite of all other things. He said he still loves us. That's unconditional. When we can't love ourselves, he loves us. What a God we... Can we give him a praise? Come on. Give him a praise. The word promises that if we come to him, he'll save us. How many has ever been healed? Amen. Amen. Many times. I don't have enough hands. I don't have enough fingers or toes to start counting. And many times he has healed my body. Because why? He's a great physician. And I take him at his word. Amen. Doctors gave me up for dead. Sent me home to die. But here I am. Many, many years later. Because God has a plan. He said, it ain't over until he says it's over. Amen. 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 Not man, not doctor. Jesus. Amen. 
He's promised to meet all our needs. Let me see if I can find greed in here. Oh, he didn't say, I want to meet all your greeds, but all your needs. Amen. 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 And he takes it a step further. I'll give you the desires of your heart when they line up with the word of God and God's will. Amen. Amen. He's promised to help us. How many has ever been helped by the Lord? Amen. Amen. When you came to near that close accident, who do you think helped you? That's when he sent one of them angels, amen, with the big wings. Yes. I don't want none of them little guys. I want a big guy. Amen. I want a big angel. Don't send them little things. I want a worrying angel. Because I'm always, something. I'm, I need a miracle all the time. Amen. amen. God said he promised to see you through, amen, all the way through to eternity and give you the victory while you're here on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. Do a little bit of reading today, from starting from verse 25 and on. If you have your Bible, turn there, Matthew 6, 25. Amen. Therefore I say unto you, makes it personal, to you, to you, to you. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or yet even for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat, and the body more than raiment or clothes? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Why are you worrying? That's what he's saying. What are you worried about? You're eating pretty good. I can tell. You're eating good. Some of you are going to eat after the service. You're eating good. You got plenty to drink. Y'all look dressed pretty nice. Amen. What are we worried about? Mm, let's move on. Watch. Listen. Which of you, by taking thought, in other words, what you think, the Bible says, whatever you think, that's what you become. Mm -hmm. Be careful with that stinking thinking. You got to think right. Think according to the word of God. Whatsoever a man thinketh, that's what he is. Mm -hmm. Thought life has a lot to do with your walk with God mm -hmm. or the lack of it. Mm -hmm. So which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic, or one inch, we'll say, to his stature. And why take ye thought for raiment or clothes? Consider the lily of the valleys. Amen. I say the valleys, it's field. How they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory is not arrayed, arrayed like one of these. The birds don't work. And God provides for them. The lilies in the field and the grass grows, and God takes care of it. Let's read on. Verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today here and tomorrow is cast into the oven. In other words, it died. Amen. Before you get a chance to cut it, it died. I wish we were doing any of it. That's another sermon. <laughs> Shall he not much more clothe you, ye of little faith? It's a lovingly kind rebuke. In other words, you're worried about all these things, amen, that you shouldn't be worried about. God's brought you this far. He'll take you the rest of the way. Amen. As I often say, he didn't teach you to swim to let you drown now. Amen. He's going to see you through all the way to the end. He's going to meet your needs all the way to the end. In spite of what life throws at you or the enemy throws at you, God always makes a way. That's why I call him a way maker. Yes, he is. Yes. The Bible said he makes a way in the wilderness, right. in the desert. He makes a way. He's a professional. He's an expert at making a way. He's the creator of all things. And if he takes care of the, the birds and even the grass, <laughs> won't he take care of you? Yeah. Won't he take care of you in, in great fashion? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things, listen, 
For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. What's a Gentile? A non-believer. Somebody that don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. They may be religious, but they're lost. Religion don't save you. Only Jesus saves you. Church don't save you. You go to church because you're saved. You can get saved in church, but it ain't the church that saves you. It's Jesus that saves you. So if you try to get to heaven any other way but through Christ, you're a robber, a liar, and a thief, and you shall not enter therein. You got to come through Christ and through his blood. Hallelujah. That's right. But it says, don't be like the Gentiles, for that's what they, they worry about those things. They seek those things. They're greedy. They can never get enough. They fear over these things. Okay? Don't be a hoarder, because God will provide. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. He knows what you need before you even ask. The Bible says, he knows what you want before you even ask for it. That's right. Now here comes the ice thing on the cake. Listen, verse 33. This is the most important thing. This guarantees all the rest. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added on to you. Seek ye first, not second, not third. Seek first God, his word, his kingdom, the principles of the Lord, his work, and all these things that the Gentiles seek after shall be added unto you. In other words, we don't have to add tomorrow's problems to today. The Bible said today has enough problems of its own. Amen. And if tomorrow comes, he'll give us strength for tomorrow like he did, gave us strength today. Amen. All we have to do is yield, amen, to the Lord Believe his word, believe his promises, and God will give us the strength to get through all the troubles today that come our way and the troubles that may come tomorrow. For me, I have found out that the more I give him, the more he gives back. You can't outgive the Lord. Amen. He's, he's more than able, and he's more than enough. Amen. When you trust him and put your heart and faith in him, my goodness. But without Christ... As your Savior, ooh, your tank is pretty much empty. It's only a matter of time before you start sucking fumes and run out of gas. Amen? Amen. Amen. Your, your reserves are limited. Mm -hmm. Your reserves, you run out sooner or later. But for the true believer, but for the true Christian, the reserves are unlimited. Amen? They're unlimited. Sky is the limit. Because God is in the third heaven. Amen? How many know there were three heavens? Well, he, we told on it. You should know. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to give you another chance. How many know there's three heavens? <laughs> Amen. Right. First one is what we're living in right where you see. Mm -hmm. The sky. Yeah. Amen. The stars at night. And the moon. The sun. That's the first heaven. Second is all the way up. Amen. In the middle. Right, that's space. Amen. Where you need a, 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 some kind of special... Uh, thing to see up in there. Amen? Uh, so the third heaven is where God lives. That's the throne room. Amen. Amen? Amen? And if you're saved and know him and love him, one day you'll get to see that. You won't need a telescope. <laughs> Amen? Amen? You'll see him. Bible says you're going to see him face to face. Oh, yes. can't wait. Jesus. Can't wait. Amen. Face to face. Amen. And you know the Bible says we're going to say one or two things to those that come before. Amen. If you love him, if you've accepted him as your savior, if you're born again, saved, like the Bible says, he says, come in. Come into the joy of the Lord. Thou good and faithful servant. No more crying. No more sickness. No more death. All has been swallowed up in the name of Jesus. But for those that reject him, for those that aren't saved, for those that say, maybe I'll get saved tomorrow, next week, whatever, I'm not ready yet. And if they die in their sins, the Bible says they're going to stand before him too. Because all are going to stand before him. Pointed on to every man wants to die, but after that comes the judgment. He's going to say to those that rejected him, because the Bible said, if you reject me, I must reject you. 
He don't want to. He said, I get no pleasure out of the death of the wicked, but that the wicked would turn from their wicked ways and be saved. But he's going to say to them, depart from me, you curse it, you work of evil. I never knew you. Oh, how many want to hear those words? I didn't think, what? Raise your hand. Uh, gotcha. you. Amen. You got to pay attention. You got to be careful how you vote around here. Amen. We know you're saved. We know you. You couldn't hear me back there, right? Amen. The smile through y'all. I got you. Amen. Woo. Thank God she saved. All right. I know what I want to hear. What about you? Amen. Well done. Well done. A good and faithful servant. Amen. Vicky said, Amen. Amen. All right. Well you know you are. Right. You're right. We're unlimited. See, people can't really limit us. The devil can't really limit us. The only thing that can limit us is the lack of our faith. Amen? Amen. The lack of faith limits us. Psalm chapter 147, verse 9. He giveth the beast, that ain't your husband either. <laughs> he giveth the beast his food, <laughs> and the young ravens that cry. Mm. Think about that. Again, he's taking care of the grass, taking care of the birds. Now he's taking care of the animals, the beasts of the field, the ravens that cry to him. How much more will he meet your need? When you cry out to God, if he cares that much about the people, about the animals rather, how much more will he take care of you? He said, just ask. God Almighty, he knows no limits. And we shouldn't either when it comes to the things of God. Heaven's not bankrupt. Heaven's not bankrupt. People get bankrupt because of circumstances out of their control many times. But God never gets bankrupt. Amen. The Bible said he owns a thousand hills with the cattle their own. Personally, I've had to ask him to slay a few of those over the years. <laughs> Heal the fatted calf, Lord. I need some blessings. Amen. 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 He owns them. And he ain't stingy. He don't mind taking care of his people. God knows all of us. Amen. Again, our names, the stars, everything about you. Amen. We, we're, listen, as God's people, we're never dealt a fatal blow. Bible said we get knocked down. We get cast down. But we're never forsaken. You never get the death blow. Amen. Like the world does. When we trust in the Lord. He knows. He knows your needs, your wants, your desires. He knows what you think before you think it. He knows what you're facing right now. <laughs> he can see deep into your heart. The Bible says the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Cuts right down to the right down to the heart, to the marrow of bone. Don't get no deeper than that. Separated between the heart and the spirit. Amen. He puts us under. He knows everything about you, in other words. He puts us on his operating table, his x-ray machine. He sees right through us. He knows what you're thinking before you're thinking. He knows right now what you're thinking. He knows what you're hurting about. He knows what you're breaking your heart. He knows what you're facing. He knows the lacks that you have. And he wants to be all in all for you. He wants to bless you. He wants to give you double for your trouble. Amen. You got to remember the Bible said that the thief, the devil, come to rob, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Yeah. Who are you going to listen to? Who are you going to believe? Amen. The devil's the one that's always tempted you. He's the one that's the old Bible. That's why Jesus called him. He said it right. He's a liar and the father of lies. He created lies. He'll make you think you're all right when you're not all right. He'll make you think when you're sinning, it's no big deal. It's just a little white sand. It's a little white lie. A lie is a lie no matter what color it is. Hello? Amen. All I know is God is more than enough. Praise the Lord. Amen. He knows what troubles you're going through. He knows what heartaches are, are breaking your heart right now. He knows it. If you're, you're praying for your lost loved ones. Amen. He knows when your children go astray. 
how that breaks your heart. But keep praying. Keep trusting. Keep believing. As long as there's breath, there's hope. Amen. Listen, I've seen them come in. Some of you are here today. Your families just gave up on you. Said that old rascal, that beast, ain't never going to be tamed. <laughs> Look at all the no, I'm not. not, not. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. With you. Amen. Amen. Can you keep a secret? I'm gonna give you a secret right now. We're all sinners saved by grace. Yes. If you're saved, That's right. there's none righteous. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus is righteous. That's right. Amen. All our righteousness, the Bible says, like filthy rags. So we're all in the same boat. Amen. 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 If you point a finger at me this way, you got three back at yourself and a thumb. <laughs> Amen. We're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Saved by grace. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Give them some praise in there. You're too quiet today. <laughs> so what's troubling you? What's on your mind? What are you worried about? Amen. Amen. This too shall pass, the Bible yes. teaches. Yes. What you're going through is only a test. It's how you handle the test, whether you pass the test or not. Amen. We've all gone through them, and you may be facing one right now. And we've all been hurt, and we've all hurt others, whether we liked it or not or meant it or not. And that's where forgiveness comes in. Amen? And we have to be forgiving as well. Bible said, if you don't <laughs> forgive those who trespass against you, God won't forgive you your trespasses. That's right. If you don't forgive those that, you know, sinned against you, he won't forgive you your sins. It's as simple as that. We need to be forgiving, loving people. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't you think that God knows right now what's weighing heavy on your heart? I might not know unless you tell me and we'll pray about it. But it's God Almighty that knows. And he cares. He even said, put all, not some, all your care upon me, for I care for you. Yes. That's right. He cares for you. Yes. It's the devil that whispers in your ear, God gave up on you. Mm -hmm. God don't care no more. God says he loves this one, he loves that one, he loves it, but he don't love you no more. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Amen. That's right. Amen. Jesus said, I send my rain and the sun on the just and the unjust alike. That's how merciful God is. Yes. Yes. He even takes care of the sinners mm -hmm. that spit in his face, poke him in his eye. Mm -hmm. But if they don't repent, they'll pay a terrible price on that day of judgment. Amen. He said, you can blaspheme the Father, you can blaspheme the Jesus, the Son, but you cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. For that is the unpardonable sin that will never be forgiven in this life or the life to come. Be careful. Be careful. Mm -hmm. But if we love the Lord and we trust the Lord, amen, do what is right according to the word of God, God is more than you'll ever need. Amen. And he'll meet all your needs along the way. How many ever came to the edge of the cliff, if you know what I'm talking about? Said, Lord, if you don't show up, I'm going over. <laughs> Are you ever been out in the ocean and you think you're going to drown in the sea of debt, maybe, or problems, or whatever the enemy's throwing at you at the time? And all of a sudden, some little boat comes by and throws you a lifesaver. <laughs> That's what Jesus is to us. We're drowning in the sea of sin without Christ. You that are listening by way of internet, if you don't know Jesus, you're drowning in the sea of sin. And all we're trying to do today is give you the lifesaver, Jesus Christ. Will you yes. take it? Yes. Will you come? You'll have that opportunity in a few moments. If he don't forget all these other things that we mentioned, the birds, the grass, and all, he won't forget you. But don't you forget him. He warned the Israelites in the Old Testament about that. He said, don't forget me. When you get blessed mm -hmm. and when you prosper and you defeat your enemies, don't forget the one who gave you the power to do it. Amen. Don't forget the one who gave you the strength to overcome. 
Don't forget the one who blessed you with all the good things in life. And what did they do? They forgot them. Mm -hmm. Over and over and over. Nothing's changed. Their clothes changed, their sandals, their styles, their thing, but the heart never changes. The Bible said it's deceitful and wicked above all things. Who can know it but God? Mm -hmm. That's why we need a heart transplant. Amen. Amen. That's why he tells us in the book of Ezekiel, I'll take that heart of stone out of you. How many of you ever had a stony heart? Mm -hmm. Three of you telling the truth. The rest of you lying. <laughs> we all had a heart of stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We tell the truth here. We all had a heart of stone. Amen. Remember, none righteous, no, not even one. That's right. For all come short of the glory of God. But he said, I'll take, when you come to me, I'll take that heart of stone out of you and put in a heart of flesh that you can feel Amen. and love and forgive. Yes. Oh, Amen. you think you're, listen, you, when you hold a grudge against somebody, you ain't hurting them. They'll probably go out there shopping in the mall and everything. Don't even know you're mad at them and don't yeah. care if you are. Yeah. So who are you hurting but yourself? That's right, that's right. Yeah. Hindering your walk with God. The Bible said if a husband and wife are at odds with one another, don't go to bed without repenting towards one another. Because if you go to pray, the ceiling is like brass. Your prayer hits the ceiling and comes back. Prayer hits the ceiling and comes back. That's what we call a yo-yo Christian. Come on. Amen. Be quick to forgive. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we're coming in for landing. Amen. Put the lights on so we can land. Praise God. If you're standing in faith in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, the promises are for you and every true believer. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. Exceedingly great and precious promises. That's what this book is. Exceedingly great with precious promises for all those that believe. Amen. 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 That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Woo. Having escaped, listen, the corruption that is in the world through lust. Mm. We lust over many things, especially as unbelievers. Ooh, our eyes are never satisfied. We lust over many things. The Bible talks about it in John. It's lust, lust is of the world. We lust in our flesh. We lust with our eyes. We lust with all kinds of things and over all kinds of things. So, But when we come to Jesus, amen, we get our priorities right. We get our head right. And then we can become partakers, partners. With Christ. Amen. And escape the lust of the world. Thank God. God has made a, a promise in the Old Testament. And he's made many promises in the New Testament. The most important promise is with salvation. Okay. Without it, you don't go to heaven. That's the ticket. Salvation is your ticket to heaven. He's promised us healing. He's promised us deliverance. He's promised us to be partakers, as we just read, in sharing the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. The promises of being used of the Lord, Amen. being a vessel, promises that the Lord has made to us. Too many to mention, too many to mention. But here again is our part found in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. That ye be not, this is your part, ye be not slothful. Mm. but followers of them who through faith and patience inherited the promises. You want to inherit the promises of God? You have to be faithful as those in Hebrews, the hall of faith, we call it, were faithful. We have, a, we have the promise of heaven if we hold on to our faith. Praise God. We have the assurance of eternal life if we don't get lazy, he's saying. Don't quit on them. Stay focused. Because this life, we just read about the grass earlier. The Bible says somewhere else, it's like here today and gone tomorrow. You ever put a, 
a, a, a pot of water on the stove for tea, teapot, and it boils, and then you see the steam, and you can see here's the stove here, and the steam goes about that high, and you don't see it no more. I would say that's how fast our life is over to Jesus. I remember one time I was ministering to a drunk in town. And he said, Preacher, he said, I hope I never die and you live forever. <laughs> I thought about that for a minute. I said, Man, he's right about that. We're never going to die. See, Christians never die. We just change our address. Amen. You're going to live forever, but where, where, where? I know where he was going. And when I told him, I said, you're going to split hell wide open. He said, what do I got to do to miss hell? Amen. Even in his drunken state, he knew he needed Christ. Amen. Hopefully you're sober enough today to know your need for Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many still glad you came in? Let me see. All right. Hey, we picked up a few. We're <laughs> doing some right. There's no greater burden bearer. In Jesus Christ. Amen. If someone cried out, Lord, I'm sick in my body. The Lord promises to be our healer. Amen. If someone cries out, Lord, my heart is broken. Cries out to the Lord in prayer, my heart is broken. He's the only one that can mend your broken heart. Yes. Amen. He's the only one. We can try, but he pours in. That love that nobody else can match. Amen, right. Someone cries out, Lord, I'm tired. His promise is he'd give us strength to endure to the end. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. If someone cried out, Lord, I'm in bondage. Sin has got a grip on me. I'm in bondage. He says, I'm the only one that can set you free. Amen. Amen. All the programs that man have, all the government programs, everything. Whew, nobody can set you free like Jesus. Amen. Nobody. Amen. 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 Promises are yea and amen, still kept by the Lord. In spite of all the things that we're facing today in our life, in our generation, all these things. Many are asking, in closing, many are asking, what is on the horizon? And I say to people, it's not what is on the horizon, it's who is on the horizon, and it's Jesus. Yes. Amen. He's coming soon. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? And he's not going to delay. He is right, I'll tell you, I, we need to live today like today is the day he's coming. Because we're not promised tomorrow. Not one of us are promised tomorrow. You're not promised your next breath. God holds that. Bible said he says whether we live or die. Amen. So we need Amen. To recognize his coming soon. Amen? Amen. Quickly, it tells us in Psalms 55, verse 22, Cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and he shall, he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. That's a promise from God. You will never, never, never be defeated if you trust the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. In spite of what you go through. How many of you ever went through something you never thought you were going to come out? But here you are. Amen. Here you are. Praise God. Because what did we say? It ain't over until he says it's over. Right. Amen. 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 Ooh, the rain may come. Listen, the rain may come. The storms are going to come. They all will always come. Amen. But if we're grounded and rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, we will not be uprooted. I can promise you that. Amen. Like a strong oak tree. Yes. You might lose a few leaves along the way. A few branches even. But if you're rooted in Christ, you're anchored in Christ, you ain't going nowhere. Amen. Why? Amen. Because you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says he's a faithful God. Yes, yes. To a thousand generations. That's us. To a thousand generations. To them that believe and put their hope in him. Listen, in closing, here it is. Living without Jesus is like skydiving without a parachute. Mm, did you see that one coming? Mm, think about it. Who would go skydiving without a parachute 10,000 feet in the air? 
It's not a matter of if, but when you hit the ground and perish. And that's what you're doing for you that don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or you're backslidden. You used to know him, used to love him, used to serve him. Like skydiving without a parachute. You will perish. Last verse of scripture. Luke chapter 13, verse 1. Except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish. Mm -hmm. There's a place and a time for repentance. That means to be sorry for your sins. You don't have to tell me your sins. I can't wash your sins away. But he can. And he will if we ask him. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord and close in prayer. Let's stay reverent for a few more moments as we close in prayer. My question is to those that are watching by internet or maybe those that are here. If you're skydiving without a parachute, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He is the parachute. He is your safety net. He's the one that can save your soul. How many are here today say, Pastor Joe, I'm watching by internet. I, I used to know the Lord, but I'm kind of lukewarm now. I'm kind of backslidden. I know I need to come back. I'm not here by accident today. This is ordained of God today. Because he loves me and wants me to be set free. Are you here say, I don't know the Lord as my personal Savior. I know about God, but I don't know him personally, but I want to today. How many here today say, remember me in prayer as you close? Let me see your hand. Raise up your hand. Say, I need Jesus in my life. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? I want to give my heart to Jesus today. Yes, God bless you. Anybody else before we close in prayer? Yes, God bless you. He said, if you're ashamed of me on earth before man, I will be ashamed of you in front of my heavenly Father and the holy angels. One last call. Don't let it be your last chance. If you need Jesus, raise your hand up, take it back down. We're not here to embarrass anybody, but to give everybody the chance. Anyone else before I pray? And let us pray. Let's pray this prayer together so we all feel comfortable. Amen? Amen. In loving the Lord. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Father I come in Jesus' name. I come in Jesus' name. I ask you, Lord, I ask you, Lord, forgive all my sin. Forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Into my life. Into my life. Save my soul. Save my soul. And make me whole. And make me whole. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe your word. I believe your word. I believe in your promises. I believe in your promises. And your promises. And your promises. If I ask, if I ask, you save me. You save me. And I ask. And I ask. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give my praise offering. God bless you. God bless you.